what are the primary heat recovery uh, heat sources used for the heat pump system uh, systems that you have designed so so far? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I've got a couple slides for that as well. Um, so the primary heat recovery heat sources that we've utilized for these systems, I, I kind of covered this earlier, but I'll show a few examples as the next step. Uh, so just to give, and there's a, a important story behind this as, as far as what drives our focus on these specific applications as well. But as I mentioned earlier, every 1.5, or excuse me, 1K that you can decrease the differential that the, of work that the heat pump has to do equals about 1.5% efficiency improvement. So that in turn pushes you up in focus for the higher temperature heat recovery heat sources. But the primary, if you start with the lowest, is seawater and ambient air. And ambient air is of course higher, higher variability um, but the lowest temperature, of course, in the 6K or so that you get in terms of a loss with the air to refrigerant heat transfer pushes that down into the lower category, even on the warmer days. But then you have the medium temperature heat sources. And in general, these are what we call the symbiosis applications. And what I mean by symbiosis is the way we look at it, every chiller is a heat pump and every heat pump is a chiller. It's just how much you're lifting the temperature or yeah, lifting the temperature in terms of the cooling provided and the heating provided and whether or, not you're, whether or not you're making use of the heating and how you're making use of it. But in this category, most of these are those symbiosis applications where you're providing, you're making use of both the cooling and the heating. And so for a district cooling application, you're reusing that district cooling return as the heat source. For a data center, you're cooling that data center and recovering the heat to, for example, a district heating system. It doesn't need to be a district heating system, but a proximity large heat load. And then wastewater. Wastewater is actually, if you look historically in Europe and specifically at district energy systems, this is the most common application of heat recovery heat source uh, for district heating. In this case, of course, you can't use that cooling, uh, not, not very well anyway. But biogas slurry is kind of a related one uh, where you're actually making use of the cooling to provide more efficient natural fertilizer back to the farmers of those biogas plants and then recovering the heat to the district heating. So just a few examples and then to finish it off, industrial flue gas and district heating return as opposed to district cooling return is also a very good uh, source for higher, higher temp.